Well, welcome everybody. It is October 2014 and this is episode number three of CX Talk. Welcome to the world headquarters of the DeJulius Group. I am Dave Murray, Senior Consultant. Alongside is John DeJulius, our President. John. Hello everyone. Thanks Dave. How are you doing today? Great to be back. Um, I actually love doing these. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun to actually do the show, but it's I, I'm enjoying the, the prep work too, finding some stories, looking around out there. We do it typically a lot anyway, but you know, having a goal of finding some stories specifically to share on this uh, in this um, setting has, has been a lot of fun. Well, I don't know if this is good or bad, but it's been uh, easier than I thought to find stories. It has been. I yes. mean, you know, I know one of them came up like yesterday. Yeah. Uh, fell into our lap. So uh, there's a lot of uh, good and, and bad examples out there that I think we could all learn from. Absolutely. Should we start with a bad story right now? What do you got? All right. Well, this one, as you mentioned, just happened. It happened about a week and a half ago. Uh, and I really thought of using it in this, in this setting because I know you and I know how much you hate the word policy. A lot of your talks are against using policy and using guidelines instead. Well, here is a time where policy really came back to bite somebody. So, uh, a soldier was flying on U.S. Airways. He was flying from Portland to Charlotte, and he was in, in his uniform. And when he got on the plane, he wanted to hang his, his coat. Uh, and the flight attendant told him that, that um, the closet was for first-class passengers only. It was against her policy, their policy, to hang the coat for him. Now, there were some people on board that went, that wanted to hang it for him. They offered to hang it for him. One person actually offered to change his first class seat with the soldier and let him sit in first class. And he was actually persuaded not to do that by the flight attendants. So obviously there was an uproar as soon as the plane landed. Um, people were tweeting about it, talking about it, and people were actually interviewed at the airport. So uh, U.S. Air has issued an apology. But again, it's a classic case of following policy, not using your best judgment to take care of a customer when it's warranted. So, yeah, I, I couldn't help but, but read it. Many people sent it to me, and uh, it's, it's, it was on CNN. It's been on a, a lot of uh, news, as you said, uh, videos, uh, interviews. So the question becomes, whose fault was it? The flight attendants or U.S. Airways? And... You know, if it's a policy, and that's why I hate the word policy, they don't, you know, employees don't, you know, know how to, there's extenuating circumstances. And she says that you can only hang up suit jackets. And, and you could say, come on, she should have better common sense. And while we hope that she would, especially when I heard multiple front class passengers offer to give up their seat in exchange, and she wouldn't allow them and, and threatened to call the captain, which no one wants to be a part of that. So this was a debacle, um, and that's why I hate the word policy. Mm -hmm. right? Change it, because when you institute a word policy, employees only see it as black and white, and they're afraid they're going to get in trouble for policy. So I had a, 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 another uh, recent example. Um, as, as, as probably most can imagine, I travel every week. And I am bouncing around different airplane, uh, different um, airlines, and you know, I, I, I about uh, seven weeks ago I got a uh, what did I get, Dave? I got uh, a rotator cuff rotator surgery. cuff surgery. So I'm in a sling. Mm -hmm. Don't have it on now for the for the this, but I'm in a sling every day, and I, so I take advantage of being boarding first mm -hmm. uh, because if you uh, take a longer, you get to board first. So on every plane I've been on, I board first. I have my carry-on, and but I can't get the carry-on with one arm up. To, not a heavy bag, but just can't get up. So flight, you know, that's why they let you board first. They help you see it. And the, every flight attendant on, on United and Southwest and you know American, put it up there. So literally two weeks ago, I, I, I get on a, a U.S. Airways and I go down the um, I board first. Go down. And I ask the gentleman as I'm board, can you help me put this away? Put this in my thing. And the, the flight attendant guy, he mumbles something and says, you're going to have to find someone else and storms away. And I was like, he, he must have misunderstood me mm -hmm. or I misunderstood him. So I go down and I'm waiting because I'm the only one on, but I can't do it. I'm looking at another flight attendant. Big guy comes up to me and he says, uh, he says, you, you, we, we can't, we're not allowed policy. We're not allowed to help you put that up there because if we get hurt, they won't cover us. I'm like, are you kidding me? 
Because the only luck you have is you either have to get another pastor to help you load this, or we can get, uh, we can check it. Mm. And I said, let me ask you something. And he was actually a really nice guy, but, you know, hiding behind policy that he's afraid of. I said, if you were a passenger following me on here, would you help me load this? Because yeah. I said, you can get hurt as a passenger. Right. And he just shook his head and walked away. And fortunately, a passenger, the next passenger came on, helped me put it up there. But I was dumbfounded. I was dumbfounded that, you know, U.S. Airway has these policies. I mean... It's just, it's, it's crazy. Remove policy from your vocabulary. I just think it's the worst thing that you can do. You know, it got me thinking too about um, the first story, the, the flight attendant uh, who was a female who wouldn't allow the soldier to hang his coat. I got to thinking that she may have wanted to help, but maybe she was familiar with a, a time where someone did get in trouble for breaking a policy. So she's just scared to do it now. She doesn't don't want know. to break that policy. Right? You absolutely don't know. Well, I got a positive story I want to share with you. Oh, good. Uh, as you know, I've always talked about, um, you know, Zappos and use Zappos as a, a great example. And I've actually called them to see, uh, you know, ask them strange questions that have nothing to do. So I decided to record it. And, and here's my call, uh, and you can listen to it. to San Francisco this weekend, and I was just wondering if you knew what the weather was, so I knew how to pack. So I don't know what the weather is, but we should definitely take a look and see that forecast. forecast. So let's take a look at it. Oh, that'd be yeah. awesome. No. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, weather this weekend. Is it a, uh, for uh, business or pleasure there? Uh, it's a little bit of both. There we go. At least you're getting the best of both worlds. You know, you're getting your work done, but you're also getting to sit back and relax, hopefully. Exactly. That goes on mm -hmm. for several minutes. And, uh, and I love what he says at the end. I said, he, he tells me what the five-day forecast is. He tells me it's going to rain. I should probably pack a rain jacket or an umbrella. He, he is the weatherman. And I'm like, Damon, that was incredible. I go, thank you so much. He goes, hey, that's what we're here for. Whether you need a pair of shoes or anything, we can help you with. Mm -hmm. It was mind-boggling. I mean, that just, that's Zappos. They, they're there to take care of customers. They are. And I have something to share with you, John. I know you already know this, but you use Zappos so much as a great example, even calling them yourself and using that example. You would think that every once in a while, one of our clients might call us and test it out. Yeah, I get worried about that. Well, that's exactly what happened, and they recorded it. So one of our clients recently called into our sister company, John Roberts Spa, to make an appointment for, uh, to have her hair done. And she recorded it, and she threw a little curveball in there, too. Uh, and so I'll, I'll let you play it first before I tell you. I know you're probably a little in suspense <laughs> to see how it goes, to see if you might get angry about the outcome, <laughs> but, uh, but I'll let you know. It, it, so it she's dealing with our call center. She's calling our call center at the spa to make an appointment. Which is now called the Relationship Center. Ah, oh, that's right. Friday. So Friday the 25th, I can do a 5 o'clock for you. Okay. Oh, you know what? I have, um, the little season tickets. Do you know, do they have a game? Yeah, let me go ahead and hold that up. Yeah. Let me see. Ooh, it's Friday nights are nice. They do all the fireworks. Yeah, they do it. Let me see if they're playing that day for you. Friday the 25th. It's like they are playing the Royals, but it isn't a way game. They're playing okay. So, as you can see, she called up to make an appointment. She realized halfway through the call, as the appointment was being made for a Friday at 5 p.m., that she has tickets to the Indian season tickets, and she didn't have her schedule handy. She didn't know if there was a home game that Friday or not. So, we looked it up for her. We found out that they are playing the Royals, but away on that night, so she was all clear for her appointment. Right, right, and uh, that was, uh, I think that was all planned on her part. I don't think she, uh, if she's recording it, but we didn't know about it. We did not. Uh, and it was, it, it was a great example. We, we, we uh, did it right that time. Now, the whole thing is, how would your staff handle this, right? If someone called up and asked for the weather or asked for this or this, you know, 
Will your staff, and it's not the staff, it's the training, the culture that they're brought in on. I think almost anyone at Zappos would know that they're there to please. And, and if your employee wouldn't say, well, I don't know what the weather is in San Francisco. I don't know if the Indians are playing Friday night. And they lose the call. You know, and the, It's not their fault. It's, right. the, it's the culture that we bring people and say, we take care of people. And we teach them how to take care of people. So I, I love the, you know, get the calling it the weather test. Mm -hmm. You know, how would your people handle the weather test? It really comes down to the service aptitude that we've trained our employees on. I'm also curious about how many employees would give that information, but also how many managers would be like, get that guy off the phone. Right, right. Killing our productivity. Yeah, we have other calls to take. Good example. Ten speakers, two days. One event, the Secret Service Summit, America's number one customer experience conference. Tickets available now at secretservicesummit.com. Dave, my prayers have been answered. Oh, good. What? <laughs> uh, I've always wanted this. This is so cool. After a long day of traveling, airports, cabs, delays, you get to the hotel and then you got to wait some more. Mm -hmm. and you just want to get in your room and collapse. Well, Hilton... Uh, Hilton Hotels has just announced it's rolling out a new technology and a new app that allows smartphones, your cell phone, to act as you can check in, mm. it's your room key, order extra amenities, pick the floor you want to be on, um, enter your hotel room. It means you can you, you book, check in, and enter your hotel without ever needing to come in contact with the front desk receptionist. Wow. That's pretty cool. I love that. I love that. You know, some of the things I also want to add that I'm particular about is I want to set my room uh, uh, temperature. Oh, yeah. I love walking into a chilled room. Right. It's just something about But how cool is that? If you're on the property, you can, you know, dial that down a little bit. That is very cool. Very cool. What do you got? Um, I want to tell you a little about, if I'd be interested in this, I uh, just last week and a half or so, I was at a client of ours conducting a CEC, uh, Customer Experience Cycle. So we were mapping the cycles that their customers went through in this particular line of business that we were dealing with. So the thing I wanted to share with you, you already know this, but it really hit me. It was such a revelation. So we spent um, two and a half days doing this CEC workshop, and it started one night we had the entire company uh, there to, to hear about it, and what we're going to do and set it up and actually do the initial stages of it. The next day we whittled that down to half, had half the company there. The last day we did it with really their steering committee, about 18 or so folks that were involved with this day to day in all aspects of the business. But what really fascinated me with this is they had not gone through this process before. They've been around for about 25 years or so, but they had not really gone through this process. I'm sorry, longer than that, probably 35 years. And what they did was they um, were finding issues and solutions to business rules as they were going along. So it really morphed away from just being service related and how they're dealing with their customers and how they're treating their customers, but also finding problems, obstacles that they have created policies, over policies. Silly no's. Yep, things they had created over time that were roadblocks or just adding pain to the customer. And it was really eye-opening for me to see them make these revelations. I didn't know their business all that well. They obviously know it very well. And to have that conversation with them and over and over say, hey, why are we doing that? and just say, let's change it. And they did. So uh, it reminded me how important a CDC is for any business and for multiple parts of your business. But it also reminded me that it's, it's worthwhile doing on a fairly regular yeah. basis to make sure that you're not um, forgetting about things or things getting by you that you should be cutting out or, or maybe focusing more attention on and you're just not. So it was really a great experience. Well, a little deeper on that, the customer experience cycle, which is, as Dave said, is really mapping the journey of, you know, if you're a restaurant, stage one is you call and make reservations, stage two is you physically get greeted by the hostess, the hostess seats you, stage four is the server greet, meal presentation, check drop, you know, goodbye. You know, that's the easiest model to, to think of. And uh, we've done this with every couple we've ever worked with, and that's what our Secret Service certification is, that we help train uh, leaders of, of, of businesses um, but it's really, it's really, as Dave said, it's one of the best things you can do because you look at each individual stage, calling to make the appointment, whatever it may be, and you really break it down into three components. What are the service defects that ruins that experience that we can be guilty of? Our, our frontline employees, 
our industry, you know, and then what are what are the, 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 the second components? What is that should happen every single time, no matter what? And then the third one is what are the above and beyond opportunities that may present themselves that we want our employees to see, recognize, and capitalize. So yeah, I love the customer experience, which you know is going to come up often. Uh, we're less than we're we're counting down. Uh, you know, less than two weeks right. to the Secret Service Summit. The 2014 Secret Service Summit is our Super Bowl. It is the annual thing we have every uh, fall, uh, November 5th and 6th this year, where we bring in, uh, it's, it's uh, almost sold out. I don't know if there's any tickets left, there might be, but um, about 500 people from all over the world uh, come in and we have about 12 to 15 presenters. Mm -hmm. And our lineup is the best it's ever been. Um, if, if you haven't signed, if you have signed up, you're, you're in for a treat. If you haven't, um, there's opportunities to, uh, to, uh, 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 buy the audio of each speaker. Um, who are you? Uh, so, so we have uh, several speakers, uh, about 15, I think. Who are you most excited to see? There's a couple, John. Um, as you know, I conducted some interviews with some of the speakers in advance of them, um, uh, coming to the summit. And one that I did was with Tim Gard. These are recorded uh, interviews that yes. you can download from our website. They are available, correct. And I had a chance to talk with Tim Gard for about um, 30 minutes or so, and he is a consultant, a speaker, an author, and he is just all around funny. I was, I was rolling, I was in my de at my desk, in my chair, and just almost falling off. He was so funny, so I can't wait to see him live because I know he's going to have our audience rolling and, and teaching them at the same time because he has some very interesting, uh, interesting facts that he shares as well. So he's one. Tim Gard is, is probably the only speaker I haven't seen um, mm. on this list. You're in for a treat. I, I know. I, I, he, he's a legend in the speaking industry. Um, everyone knows who he is. Mm -hmm. And every speaker we've ever had says, you got to get Tim Gard. And, and I've tried for years. And we finally got him. And they say he is the funniest person alive. He is. Um, and, but it, it's not just funny to be funny. It's funny with, you know, it's one of those things where you, where you laugh for 10 seconds and think for 30. Right. You know, and like, yes. whoa, can we be guilty of that? Right. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, featuring, uh, doing a workshop on the customer service revolution, which is my, my new book that's coming out in January that I'm really excited about and talk about how you truly create a revolution in your business and in your industry. But someone else, James Gilmore wrote what has been said to be one of the top 100 books in the past 25 years, uh, The Experience Economy. Mm -hmm. and, and I read that book uh, a while ago, and it has really been one of the leading factors of how I've designed uh, uh, both my businesses, John Robert Spa and now the De Julius Group. Just James Gilmore's mind of just how he sees things through his lens and you're just, they're so easy and simple, you're kind of embarrassed that you haven't thought about it. Who else? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him as well. And also Robbie Richmond. Robbie Richmond is someone who was credited for helping to shape the culture at Zappos. Uh, he was at Zappos, he actually was the founder of Zappos Insights, which uh, is basically their <coughs> educational arm. And he has written a book called The Culture Blueprint. So I am really looking forward to seeing him in person because obviously he has a, a ton of Great experience. Well, Zappos, right? right. I mean, yeah. how much better can Zappos be? Um, Rory Vaden spoke in 2012 at the summit, was one of our highest rated speakers of all time. Uh, people asked for him to come back, and it worked out perfectly because he is coming out with his new book, mm -hmm. Procrastinate on Purpose. Mm -hmm. And Rory's uh, last book was a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller. And this will be a guaranteed. Um, and he, he is just one of the best, uh, brilliant speakers, motivating speakers. I, I, you know, people already know him and love him. Another person, so we have two types of speakers. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, subject matter experts, leading authorities, Gilmore, myself, or Rory Vaden, or Tim Gard. Then we also have uh, several uh, presidents and CEOs of world-class customer service brands. So that's kind of... Uh, uh, where uh, Robbie Richmond kind of falls in. He, he, he ran uh, a big part of Zappos. Um, one of my favorites this year is Chuck Runyon, one of the co-founders mm -hmm. of Anytime Fitness. The number one franchisee in the world, franchisor company in the world. 2,500 locations. 
He is there uh, to talk about how you create a world-class brand internally. And, and I just spoke um, about two weeks ago at their uh, national conference. And uh, with it, uh, they had this huge, huge uh, uh, area, uh, booths, you know, their vendors are there. And the one that had a line of 150 people, 200 constantly, was their tattoo place. Mm -hmm. Anytime fitness, customers and franchisees and employees collectively have over 2,000 people walking around with an Anytime Fitness tattoo. You want to talk about an amazing company. Um, another brand executive, TJ Shear, uh, runs uh, written several books, runs a great chain of um, uh, restaurants. Mm -hmm. And he's there to talk about how he makes it happen. So you don't not only got doers, uh, I mean, uh, uh, people who write about it and consult, but people who are living behind that pointy end of the spear trying to make it happen. You know, TJ is very interesting, too, because uh, he got his start when he was in college working at Chuck E. Cheese. And really, there's, there's no other place that it's all about the experience than Chuck E. Cheese, right? So, uh, so right from the start, when he was still in college, he was in this direction. He has some fantastic experience to share. Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, we hope you can join us. Um, if you're not going to be in Cleveland on November 5th and 6th, you will have the benefit of being able to uh, get the audio of all these speakers. The Customer Experience Executive Academy. Preparing customer service executives to lead, design, and manage the customer experience. Applications for 2015 courses now being accepted. Find out more at cxeacademy.com. So, John, I have a story that I want to share with you. It, it comes from um, customer experience expert, Shep Hyken, former uh, speaker, past speaker at the Secret Service Summit. and Great friend, friend of mine, yeah. Best-selling author. Yes. Amazement Revolution. So he wrote about an experience he had when he was speaking to a company. He was speaking to a grocery chain in the Midwest, and he talks about this fantastic use of social media that happened that I thought you would find pretty cool, so I wanted to share it with I you. I haven't heard this story. So um, after he spoke to this chain, the, the manager of what they called the listening room, and the listening room at this chain is where they monitor all their social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever else they're using. And so he talked about a situation that happened that, that he was very proud of. And here's what it was. A customer goes into one of the stores and tweets out, I'm here at the grocery store, I am looking for X product, and every time I come here they never have it, I'm mad. And he tweets it. So they get that in the listening room in just a matter of minutes. And what they're able to do is, as this customer wheels around and goes to the checkout, he's at the checkout line, they tweet him back and say, hey, we're sorry for the inconvenience, can you jump out of line and go to aisle one and meet our manager? The manager's there, he helps him find the product because it was in a different part of the store, wow. and they took him back to the, the uh, register where all his food was still waiting, got, got him through quickly, and sent him on his way. He later tweeted how happy he was um, with the results. So just a great use of Twitter. So many times I think we hear of the bad uses of social media where companies are tweeting out negative things about their customers like the, uh, the restaurant that you cite a lot in uh, Southern California where they, they uh, tweet about the no-shows. We see all those negative things of social media. Here's one where it worked and it worked really, really well. Yeah, I, you know, I think uh, people are, are finding out that social media is not just a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. It's a two-way communication. And it's an opportunity to service your customer, and that, that's a great example uh, that you found, and, and by Shep. Dave, last time, uh, episode two, we mentioned that we'd love to have our viewers' uh, comments mm -hmm. and questions. Yes. So i got a great question here that I've actually gotten a lot over the years. Um, this this uh, person says, you know, as a customer service representative, I love going above and beyond, but unfortunately, somehow, I learned to underperform. Uh... Delivering actually customer service is not just for overachievers, but uh, she says that while she is always felt she was an eager beaver, ambitious, but because she was criticized so much for this by management, she felt like she st mm. stood out in a bad way. So now uh, she, you know, she just you know doesn't do it. Have we encountered this? And yeah, I mean, you know, one of the, the exercises I do when I go with companies, I don't know if you do this, is we'll have a uh, people in the room and we'll have managers put their head down and then we'll say, how many people truly feel 
that they may get in trouble for going above and beyond. Mm. And, and, you know, majority of the room, more than 50% raise their hand. Now, before that, I'll ask the manager and they'll say, no one. No, right. we, we, we promote it, we do this, we do that. And, and, and it's shocking. It's mm -hmm. shocking. I, I invite you all to do that. Do some mm -hmm. kind of anonymous survey with your team. It will be much, much larger of a percentage than you think. Now, that could be from their past, you know, work history of getting their hand slapped for going above and beyond. Um, you know, it's, it's like the uh, flight attendant, you know, mm -hmm. worried that she'd get in trouble for allowing a, 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 an Army veteran to, uh, to hang up his, his uh, you know, uh, jacket. Um, it's, it's just, you know, all the things that, you know, it, it, it might be a past job, it might be an existing job where someone said, why'd you do it that way? You know, my, my philosophy is you can never get in trouble for something you do, mm -hmm. only for something you don't do. Right. Yeah, don't be a bystander. I'd rather you be naive than paranoid. Mm -hmm. uh, be too generous, and we can always, you know, pull you back and say, hey, that was really good, but, you know, before you have to give this away, you know, let's see if we could have, you know, accommodated around little inconvenience. But um, that, that is a great question that I challenge everyone uh, that's listening, watching, to do an anonymous survey of asking your employees if they have any fear of going above and beyond for the customer. And I, I would love to hear uh, what your results uh, be, be, are. Yeah, definitely. And that reminds me, not only on that, but we would like all of your comments, as John mentioned, any comments, questions like the one that we received for today's show, please put them right on the uh, comment section under this show and we will answer your questions on a, on a future show and we'd love to uh, hear your comments, how we can get better, talk about things that you would find interesting, we, we'd love to hear it. So thank you very Share much. Share your comments, please, love it. Yes. That's gonna do it for us today on episode three of CX Talk. We look forward to seeing you again when we have episode four debuting on November 19th, 2014. Until then, hopefully we'll see you at the Secret Service Summit. And we are always at your service. CX Talk is brought to you by the DeJulius Group. Follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, and visit our YouTube channel monthly for more entertainment and education with John and Dave on CX Talk.